Okay, so first of all today we're going to look at diagnosing disease. Now this is quite a tricky one to do. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a brief overview of how you can tell most of the major diseases apart fairly simply and then it will help narrow your choices down. This isn't completely definitive because there's only so much I can do in a few minutes but it will give you a good overview. Now why most hobbyists when they see white spots appear on their fish that's usually the first sign of a parasitic infection and at that point they often think they've got white spot or ick or cryptocarin as it's also known. Now actually in the UK at the moment that's actually quite an unusual disease. Um, traditionally it's probably the most common one in the hobby so that is why people often see them. If they've got little white spots all over the fish that's what they've got but often that isn't the case. There's quite a lot of parasitic infections that appear as little white spots and all of them require different treatment or some variations in treatment at least. So it's very important um, that you can find out what disease it is because this will affect what treatment you can do for it. So as a rough guide we're going to cover first of all the main four which can appear as little white spots and there are a few others as well. So we'll start with the easy one first with the white spot. The white spot works on a 10 day cycle so what you'll find is the spots appear and then they're only visible to the human eye for 24 hours, they drop off at night and it's up to nine days then before they reappear. That's a normal temperature range, so 26, 28 C, something like that. And assuming you're at normal salinity. Now, if the spots are appearing and disappearing like that, then there's a good chance you will have white spot. But there are some other easy ways to tell. If, if with white spot, it irritates the fish quite a lot. So you'll see the fish flashing onto the sand or the rocks and scratching themselves a lot, usually once or twice a minute. And uh, to start with, on the first wave, usually it's only one fish infected. When it comes around to the second phase, about 10 days later, you'll find the spots become more spread out. So you'll get some spots on days 9, 10, 11. When you get to the third round of it, then it could be on days 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So to start with, it'll only be one in 10 days, and you think, yeah, it's gone, but actually it's just part of the cycle. With white spot, they'll be flicking constantly. The spots are quite large, about the size of a full stop on a printed page and raised up like a pimple or a zit or a little volcano. And that's quite easy to spot once you're familiar with it. Other diseases which can appear as little white spots would be things like Brucinella. Now with Brucinella, you will notice that the spots are sort of being evenly distributed like they are with white spot. They're mainly concentrated initially around the head and forehead region. Brucinella spreads much more quickly and whereas white spot can kill maybe 50% of your fish in six weeks if left untreated, Brucinella can wipe an entire tank out in a matter of hours sometimes. You, while there is only one strain of white spot, there's about 600 strains of brook known and probably a lot more that aren't. So it does vary quite a bit. But brook is generally will make the fish look very slimy. They'll often look slightly foggy in appearance or sort of slightly greyish. The fish will breathe very heavily. The spotting is concentrated around the head. The mortality rate is usually very high and very swift. Things like cardinals, clowns and damsels are often affected more severely, dwarf angels as well, it's particularly deadly to mandarins as well, so if you find those the fish more likely to be affected and you find there's a lot of sliming, rapid breathing and you're getting mortality in very short time, chances are it's Brucinella. Another disease which is often mistaken for Brucinella is velvet. Now this is also known as Udenim and this is much more deadly. This again spreads on the head initially and there will be a thick mucus layer appear very rapidly within a few hours. Often the fish are dead within hours and it spreads rapidly fish to fish on a massive killing spree. Now fortunately velvet is very rarely seen in the home aquarium. You do sometimes get it on fish that are imported but because of the long transit times for the UK, 24 to 48 hours, most fish that have velvet die in the bags before they get to here. So as long as the shop doesn't debag dead fish into the system by accident, the chance of you getting velvet is very, very small. If a fish does have velvet, it shows such horrific symptoms so rapidly that generally no one will buy it in that condition and take it home. So that's a very fairly easy way to identify. One that always catches people out is flukes. Now there's basically two main groups of flukes. And the first one of these is the very small ones. Now the very small flukes, barely visible to the naked eye, they're extremely tiny. They look like little white spots, they're often mistaken for white spot, but they rarely kill fish. They do spread through the water, so they'll spread fish to fish, and although one may be affected initially, it won't be long before several start showing symptoms of it. While the flukes themselves don't do a huge amount of harm to the fish, they can be quite unsightly, make the fish look awful, and can 
but fortunately small flukes can be eradicated quite easily. Um, the second type of flukes are much larger. These can get up to like half an inch, about 12 mil long, and these spread only by body contact, they don't spread through the water. So if you find one fish is really badly affected, but nothing else is, chances are it could be one of the larger types of flukes. And these spread by division on the body of the fish, and then when the fish are in close body contact with one another, it spreads across on the fish. So with those you'll often find one is badly affected, others are not. Fish often look better in the morning and then worse throughout the day, or vice versa. If you look closely, the fish will often look dehydrated. It may flick and things, but not as much as with white spot. And you'll often see fraying to the fins as the flukes make it brittle. There's a few other infections which also look like little white spots as well, like parasitic copepods, parasitic flatworms, and a whole host of other diseases, but they're extremely rare in the home aquarium. So hopefully now you'll be able to identify what disease you've got, and once you've got that, then you'll be able to tailor a treatment more specific to the type of infection it is. So check out our other videos on quarantine and the various diseases.